Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the Alpha League Podcast. Um, my name is Tussel, I'm your new host. Uh, I'm currently here with Orion, who runs uh, the Alpha League, and a couple of uh, celebrity special guest judges. Um, we have Curie and we have the Pants. Uh, say hello, guys. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Fantastic. Hello, everyone. Yes, the serious one is, is the sensible man who runs it all. Um, so we're here uh, today to restart the podcast. Um, we'll be doing a weekly show uh, at a similar time uh, every Sunday is the idea. Um, generally speaking, just looking at the state of Alpha League, where we are, uh, what's coming up. Uh, we'll try and do some of the some fun stuff we've seen in the past, list reviews, talks about the meta, etc. And, uh, and, and see where it goes. Maybe some special guests in the future. Um, I am one of the new casters uh, for the Alpha League. Uh, you may have caught the quarterfinal match between Death Guard. It was disgusting on Thursday. Fantastic game. Uh, well played both players. Uh, I'll be doing the EU slot and we have Glynis here who does the US slot. Uh, that will actually be starting shortly after this podcast uh, today. So look out for that. He's also one of the semi-finalists. So getting around. Um, now, uh, we're not just here to talk about Season 8 for the minute, we are here to talk about Season 9. You people who've been paying attention will have just seen a message from the man himself. Uh, Orion, please, if you would just go through that. Yeah, so we have just opened up the uh, signups for Season 9. Uh, they're going to be running from today all the way through to Sunday the 5th of, Sun yeah, Sunday the 5th of September at midnight. And from there, it's going to be, yeah, it's uh, two weeks. You have, you can sign up without a list already thought out, and you just have to get your list finished and ready by the time that the signups close. Fantastic. Uh, that's great. So you've got a couple of weeks to sort out, figure out the meta, um, whether you're going to be playing Admech or Orcs or Thousand Suns, and then get involved. Um, we'll be going through uh, s signups are closing in two weeks. Yes, exactly, Creeper. We'll be uh, we'll be going through a few more of the details about season nine and what to look forward to uh, in at in a few minutes. Well, uh, half an hour or so. But for the minute, let's talk about season eight. Uh, at the moment, we're in the semi-finals. One of those semi-finals is going on, I believe, as we speak between Draren and Go Faster. Uh, so let's talk about a little bit about what's happened up till now. We have another chance to check in. Uh, we've had some interesting win rates and trends, some of which could be foreseen. Uh, Pants, who who did well, surprisingly? Surprisingly, 185 Vanguard did well. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, more generally than that, Drakari did pretty well. Uh, the Drakari did amazingly well. The, they're still sitting at about a 65% win rate in tournaments globally, but in Alpha they've done even better. Um, hovering mainly above 80%, and only by virtue of most of them getting knocked out of the playoffs have they finally dropped to 80%. And, shock horror, Admech have also done absolutely fine. Um, right. With a, I can't remember off the top of my head, but a 70-something percent win rate. Uh, 68, in fact. Uh, it's dropped again because of uh, some of the Admech lists getting knocked out of the, the playoffs. Very interesting that Drakari are so high, and then have kind of fallen short. Uh, none of them in the semis. Was there any in the quarterfinals? Yes. Uh, the, yes, the, 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 the most recent list that yes. the 185 Vanguard knocked out was Baseman's Drakari. And that's just uh, virtue of Admech countering Drakari, you reckon? It might be a, by virtue of that list countering everything. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that you're very uh, positive about it. It's a well-balanced army, uh, incredibly well-piloted. <laughs> the name of the list is Skittle Vanguards are bullshit. <laughs> well, he's living up to his name. 
Um, and, and on the other end, we had uh, a quarter final between uh, the one I stre we streamed on Thursday between two Death Guard who've done surprisingly well. Would you agree? Yeah, Death I would Guard say were a bit of a um, an alpha staple. Um, yeah, lots of lo lots of good Death Guard players in alpha who always um, take them to reasonable success. Yeah, I think they've done a little bit better than we expected with um, the incoming of Admech in particular. Because they do have the tools to deal with Death Guard quite effectively. So seeing them do as well as they have is pretty, I'd say pretty healthy for the meta as a whole. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's interesting how people have adapted, um, players have adapted to the perceived meta and, and, and managed to get through even in potentially tough matchups which is which is interesting i mean the warp uh, the warp time nerf uh hit them admech dangerous and and they've still managed to get up there with uh with two lists one into the semis uh who will be playing i believe on tuesday um against I believe the second semi final is uh, due to be played on tuesday yep. yeah against uh, another admech list so it's up to uh, one of the players to stop Admet getting to the finals. Uh, speaking of uh, the different matchups we've got in the semis, the first one, the one that's going on right now, is that Vanguard Skittle list uh, against Sisters, being piloted by Dryarion, who... New codex, strong codex, not quite the showing we were expecting. No, not really. Um, they've kind of disappointed now fully. I don't think they've done quite as well as they have in worldwide tournaments, and... I think there's a, they're a fairly tricky army to play, despite the fact that they can kind of rig the game to win for themselves. Miracle Dice. Miracle Dice is a rule that, when used correctly and used well, should give you a significant edge, but it doesn't always work out. Curie, do you think that uh, it's uh, a skill flaw? that's holding them back or, or perhaps it's something different about the meta maybe what's the death guard matchup like and that that could be the amount of death guard and custodies that we have could be hurting them i'm of the opinion that it's a skill floor issue um the sisters book is very strong does very well into many different matchups um the flexibility of being able to choose your rights pre-game can really make or break some matchups i mean we're seeing it a little bit more with the spoiler thousand suns and gray knight matchups <laughs> yeah uh, with the ability to choose that five up uh deny but uh, at the same time like uh sisters are doing very well globally right now uh so i think it's there's a good chance that because of when the list locks for alpha happened people still hadn't fully figured out the sisters book and now here we are a couple months later and i think that we're going to be seeing some much more high quality sisters lists in uh, the next round of alpha yeah, there's always that exciting period when a codex comes out when, when you've got all these players who've been waiting for the book looking at, can I play this? This looks great. This looks viable. And you get a lot of different lists and then it slowly kind of whittles down to some key play styles, right? Um, and, and maybe that hadn't happened yet. Maybe something we'll see with three books next season, uh, Orcs, Grey Knights and Thousand Suns. Yeah, entirely possibly. Which, uh, which just makes for a more fun and varied tournament, I'd say. Um, Absolutely. So, uh, one of the, uh, obviously the key upsets, I mean, we've talked about some of the strong armies here for a second, we've talked about Drakari and Admech, but, you know, if we remember last season, Imperial Guard, absolutely killing it, winning, and yet they're nowhere to be found. Been there, done that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was only one list entered that was mono um, at um, uh, Imperial Guard this uh, season despite last season's final being Admech versus Admech uh, Guard versus Guard? Oh, sorry, yes uh, Astro Militarum versus Astro Militarum my brain, yep. yeah, yeah. AM versus AM, it's the same thing um, yep. and, and, and I guess that's uh, because of the Laz chickens, I would imagine Laz chickens, and I think the perception maybe amongst the Astro Militarum players that uh, Death Guard was not going to be as prevalent and they weren't going to get as much out of their vengeance for Cadia. Right, yeah, of course, makes sense. And I'm um, thought, well, I mean, they missed a trick. There's a lot of Death Guard. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And Death Guard does not like playing um, Astro Militarum very much. <laughs> Uh, who does? Um, okay, so an another. All right, let's move on to another another army that uh, didn't quite have the showing that 
maybe we didn't, well, we definitely didn't expect what we were hoping for. Tao had high hopes for one man who made it through the playoffs. Uh, Pants, I know you were following him quite closely. Uh, how how did that whole list work? How did he how did he make it through, and then what happened? That was <laughs> a list that um, really demonstrated some of what Tao can can bring to the table. The uh, the both the the mobility aspect that a number of people um, forget to account for, and the firepower that they're that they're capable of bringing. Um, Turns out that Shock Horror, despite the expense, Cyclic Iron Blasters can still do an awful lot of work. Um, Remoras can be fantastic units, despite the inability of aircraft to hold objectives. Just that um, the, the engage scoring, the movement blocking, all sorts of things that they can do to, to harass the opponent uh, can, can really help. So a tough... Uh... Uh, so yeah, overall it was just a, a really good, well put together list that made a lot of um, use of a lot of what fire, uh, Farsight Enclaves bring to the table. And do we do we think it was particularly good considering the uh, due to the perceived meta and it worked into that you know speed mobility firepower how do how do we how do we think they might uh, they might fare next season uh, they're pretty decent into orcs are they well it obviously helps that they're they're full of strength five weaponry which isn't nearly as unhappy going into orcs as everyone else's strength four and three weaponry. Yeah, that's that's a fair point. Maybe we'll see something, but uh, still, still, still not great. And speaking of the orcs, um, I am not sure that we had an orc list this season, did we? Uh, we had three, but they did not do particularly well. I see. I see. Um, were they? They managed to win one match between the three players. Ah. Okay. Well, that's going to change. That will all change. Yeah, squig buggies by themselves will make sure that changes. <laughs> I hear um, uh, Pants with his hat on as a rules judge uh, thinks the orcs have one of the best rules in the codex, in the game. Ramshackle, I think it's his favourite. Oh yeah, my favourite rule. I love it. Quality design. <laughs> I mean, the rule itself Let's... is fine. It's just over applied in that codex, I think. <laughs> Let's just give duty eternal to everything. <laughs> It's a it's a buggy. Everything green. It it's a buggy. It's gotta have, yeah, it'll be fine. Um, so I I do we see, sorry spoilers and to jump ahead here, do we see uh, lists having to change in tech entirely for that? Do you reckon, next season? Well, as ever, it depends on a uh, how concerned you are about facing orcs as an opponent. Um, if you are thinking to yourself, my route to victory will, is going to go through Orcs, then given that I firmly expect we're going to see some very vehicle-heavy Orc lists, I think it would be unwise to ignore that in your list building. Uh, on the other hand, there's still an awful lot of opponents that damage 2 is fantastic against. Absolutely. And uh, just just before we move on, um, very quick uh, to to season nine, just kind of wanted to gloss over um, no custodies or space marines getting that far, um, despite being well space marines as a whole, uh, custodies being what our second most popular. Uh, well, custodies are still in it. Uh, are they not? No. Custodies were knocked out in the quarterfinals. Knocked They're out. knocked out uh, in the quarterfinals. Sorry, yes. Glynisir uh, took down Citronad, who was the last yes. uh, remaining Custodes uh, holdout. Bastion of non-robot Imperium Hope. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, sisters. Eh, they don't really count. They're doing it for themselves. Um, quality. Love that. Okay. Um, so, Space Marines uh, just know where to be found, then? Yeah, well, they, there's a couple of them made it into playoffs in, uh, um, in general. I believe there was uh, one Death Watch list and one... White scars. White scars list. Yeah. I'll be the pants. And there was there was nine hands list, right? Uh, Did that make it in? I and one remember. dark angels list. There was one dark there was. angels list. Yeah. Okay, so, a, so a, a they did have some smarter. representation, but they all went out pretty early. Yeah, they were gone by the end of the second round. Um, and we think that's just uh, too many tough matchups. Different things. Uh, Pants, you were you were piloting a list. Um, went out to Drakari, I believe. 
Yeah, indeed. I was piloting a specifically anti Drakari list into Drakari and lost. But uh, <laughs> in that particular case, that was because I did not play very well and my opponent did. Yeah, also, it's a tough matchup, even if even if you've got an anti list, I imagine. Um, I've I've I have yet to play against Drakari in the, all the tournaments since the Codex came out, and every list I've designed being anti Drakari in some way or form. Caladius tanks everywhere. I have yet to play Drakari. So uh, the one list that I've designed specifically to beat Drakari beats Drakari very well, but loses to almost everything else. <laughs> Yeah, so um, that that's maybe not what you need when you're when you're playing in a tournament. No, unfortunately not. <laughs> okay. Speaking of Death Watch, by the way, just like Go to um, pay a little respect to them for uh, managing a seventy-three percent win rate overall, and yet getting only one player into the playoffs, who then lost in the first round. So that was uh, not very representative. Oh God, yeah, that's unfortunate. Maybe some dropping due to points and not going through, you know, a lot of three and ones. Indeed. Yeah, that is unfortunate. Uh, that can happen sometimes. Uh, I know it happened to me. Um, so, all right, let's let's move on and talk about season nine. That's what we're. No, well, let's... Uh, just before we do that, let's um, yep. have a look at the four Two lists points. of our four semi-finalists. Yes, absolutely. Sorry, jumping the gun. I see a gun. I jump. Uh, let's do that. Well, there are a lot of guns in these four lists. Uh, particularly in the Go Faster one. Uh, let's just switch across here. There we go. So this is the bracket here we've got. And uh, you can see up here at the top you have Dryaran against Go Faster. That would be the sisters against the uh, Skittle Horde. So let's, let's have a look at their list, shall we? So first thing... Dryarian's list. Uh, he's cleverly named it Sisters, so you won't forget uh, what it is. Um, and a quick question here from the longest name I've ever seen in chat. Haitor Henrique Velasco. What do you hosts think about new orcs countering Skittle spam? Do they? Um, I don't think they really do. I mean, Darker Jets kind of do okay into them, but I mean, unless you're bringing like six Darker Jets. Which is going to be like what half your army? Yeah, the rate of fire to get through the the skittles can work, and, but and you're still going to be losing two or three jack jets a turn, most likely, at least. Yeah, and the, you're not getting the benefit of the ramshackle if you're going for a vehicle heavy list because of the damage one that they're shooting at you with uh, eighty shots or what have you, or is it it's sixty shots? Yeah. 60 shots now from a buffed like, up ranger squad. Yeah. Maybe there's some play there, but there's not an obvious counter that I'm seeing. Yep. Yep. And if you are vehicle heavy, there's obviously chickens. But anyway, on to the sisters list. Yes. Uh, well, one thing I will say is that while I don't really expect to see horde orc lists, it is worth noting that the shtick of Go Faster's list is an awful lot of strength for radium carbines. And um, orcs don't care. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so it could be, could be interesting. All right, yes, we're um, staying with the list. So this is uh, Dry Iron Sisters list. Uh, first, we have a patrol, uh, Sisters Patrol. It's Order of the Evan Chalice, uh, headed up by a Canoness and Morven Val herself. Um, the Canoness has a Brazier of Holy Fire and the Relic Annunciation of the Creed. And the warlord traits terrible knowledge. She knows something terrible. That's unfortunate for her. <laughs> terrible for the opponent. It's a six. It's a six. Um, so the Ebon Chalice is the CP regeneration. Or not regeneration. CP, you start the game with a six. Uh, miracle dice. Is that right? That, that's what terrible knowledge is, yes. It yeah. says the first miracle dice you get in the game, which you get at the start of the first battle round, is a six. Which is just incredibly useful. You can save it, you get that three, you've got a nine inch charge, you get anything above a three. Uh, really reliable. So let's let's just run through it and then we can discuss or it. Or you've got one guaranteed invuln save. Yeah, absolutely, for your rhino or your something. Uh, so he's got two basic battle sister squads in there. Uh, a preacher uh, to buff up presumably uh, Repentia that we might see. 
Um, we have two units of Seraphim with bolt pistols and hand flamers on a couple of them. Uh, we have an Exorcist, which is unusual for sisters, I'd say. Um, and we have a Retributor squad with four multi melters and two Armorium Cherubs, that's pretty standard. And then we have a second patrol, um, which is Bloody Rose for that melee threat. Uh, Repentia Superior in there for the advance and charge. Celestine and her friends who follow her around everywhere and she can't shake them. Uh, another ba basic Battle Sister squad. Two units of 10 Repentia, the big, big threats. Two units of 10 Zephyrim and then a Sororitas Rhino there, presumably to put some Repentia in, slingshot them a bit for that extra charge. Um, so what are, we, what are we looking at as an overall strategy for this list then, guys? Well, having seen Jerion play this list quite a few times now, we know that he likes to put a lot of his army into reserve as much as he can, basically, and deep strike and come off on the side of the board and make the opponent really have to scramble to deal with his threats. So he's got his Repentia and a Rhino. He's got his Zephyrim and his Zephyrim. Zephyrim and Zephyrim? Yeah, Zephyrim. Zephyrim and Seraphim in the... Uh, in Good golly. In Deep Strike Reserves. Sometimes he, start, uh, he started the Seraphim on the board a couple of times. Like one squad of them. So that I, that's, uh, that's interesting. Um, obviously with the six early on, as I said, you roll that three on a Miracle Dice on the start of the battle round or you shoot something, then you get that three and you've got a nine inch charge for one of these big squads coming down. And, and they do a lot in melee, these Zephyrim. Um, I have seen them charge into uh, White Scar's Blade Veterans and tear them to pieces. Um, there's, uh, th he normally takes the Conviction um, for the extra AP on Sixes, I believe? Exploding Sixes. Exploding no. Sixes. The, no, the extra AP is in shooting. The extra AP is in the shooting, yeah. And uh, uh, there's a stratagem for Mortal Wounds. Um, when you're fighting in combat on 4-ups. Um, uh, yes, I believe so. And <laughs> yes, it's an artifact brazier. Um, she's very uh, dangerous. Don't try and copperfield. Um, consent is very important. Um, why do we think he's got the immolator in there? That's uh, that's the key thing I'm looking at. Wait, he has an immolator? Not immolator. The exorcist. exorcist. The exorcist. Do apologize. Um, one of the reasons is to fit nicely into playing to the last. Um, the Exorcist can usually hide pretty well, making use of the Strat to fire its main, die we main weapon without requiring line of sight. Um, Just... And as one of the three most expensive units, hopefully that can be a, a reasonably easy five points. Yeah, that on top of uh, Celestine and... More than Vile. More than Vile. All of which are quite difficult to get rid of. Absolutely, and then uh, Celestine stands back up. But the uh, the other interesting thing, I guess, about this list... Is Celestine usually stands back up. Usually. So he hasn't had the best of luck with it. <laughs> um, still managing to get by somehow. But, uh, uh, yeah, that, that can be unfortunate. Rolling Not rolling a two-up is, is a bad feeling. Um, well, one in six times. <laughs> it's true. Um, the other thing that's interesting, particularly with the, the, the big characters... Um, more than Val and Celestine that, that that's lacking in this list is the Sacrosants. Um, uh, I've I from what I understand, you quite often see um, these characters standing out on objectives, protected by the bodyguard rule, so you can't interact with them. You certainly don't want to get anywhere close. Um, but he doesn't seem to have taken them. As I was quite surprised by the lack of the uh, Sacrosants as well. Most sisters lists that I've been encountering have anywhere from five to twenty of them. Because not only are they excellent bodyguards, but they're quite potent melee threats in of themselves. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite an interesting list in that it doesn't have them and it doesn't have any Dominion squads. Both of which have become quite common in Sisters lists, and a lot of the Sisters lists we did see this season had both of those aspects, and this one doesn't. Yeah, we don't have the Dominion squads for the scout move with the Rhinos to give you that turn one threat with the Retributors, and only one Retributor squad as well. Um, which is so uh, a lot more in your face and killy than uh, than other 
sisters lists out there. So, all right, we've we've looked at him. Also worth highlighting that one of the people, re- one of the reasons people like Dominions right now is to uh, use the strat to dish out mortal wounds with their storm bolters, and Drarian achieves that with his Seraphim instead. Um, since Evan and Chalice have a strat to deal mortal wounds with flames, which is why he's got those two hand flamers in each exactly in each squad, um, and coming down with the amount of shots that you you quite often get that's enough realistically so that's fair makes sense um all right so uh, a lot more fighty but and a lot more um maneuverable forcing you to screen which is something that is not a problem for the list we're about to look at uh skittle vanguards are bullshit i'm just reading a title that's not an opinion um so it's not an opinion it's a fact (laughs) It also appears to have been done by the Pants999 as the user <laughs> up at the top here. Let me just briefly... It's something <laughs> Are you actually go I'll, faster? I, no, 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 no I, will, I will explain that. Something I just want to highlight slightly early, I'm ready for Season 9, is a brief reminder of a little bit in the... Um, Primer, where it now says, please do not... If, if you have a pastebin account, which allows you to edit pastes, please do not edit pastes containing um, army lists. If you change your mind about what your list should look like before sign-ups finish, that's fine, but rather than editing your previous list, please create a new one and get in touch with a judge to get your previous list replaced with the new one. Uh, the reason for that is it's obviously a huge no-no to edit your list after the season starts, and we can't really tell whether that has happened, except by virtue of the fact that Pastebin marks any edited lists with a little edited bit in brackets. So at the start of the season, I went round fixing up things on behalf of everyone who had ignored that little rule uh, right. by creating my own Pastebin to replace any edited ones. I would quite like not to have to do that every season, so please remember this rule for season nine. Uh, yes, well, thank you for the uh, for the effort. That's what I'd say. Uh, much appreciated. You've done sterling work, sir. Designing this list. How dare you? Um, all right. So uh, let's 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 run through it. Uh, it's a battalion detachment and a custom forge world, rad saturated forge world, scarifying weaponry. So not Lucius, not Mars. Two of the most common ones is the first thing to say. Let's let's run through it. Uh, you've got a daily loss sauce 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 sauce. Um, Skatari Marshal with the Exemplar's Eternity for those reroll ones, and the Warlord trait for Program Retreat, and a Tech Priest Manipulus, obviously doing his uh, priestly things, giving the buffs. And in here we have oh look at that, there's a lot of troops. Uh, we have a unit of ten Skatari Vanguard, a unit of nine. Uh, 20, 20, another 5, 5, and 5. Uh, then we have a second battalion. Uh, exactly the same thing. Uh, we have a Skatari Marshal with the Mechanicus Locum, 5 point telemetry cache. Um, a Tech Priest Dominus with the Raiment of the Technomata, Tech Priest Manipulus, and then uh, just and more 20. Skitari Vanguard, so literally nothing other than Skitari. Uh and characters in this list. Uh, fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> so, what's the uh, what's the Forge World choice? Tell me about that. That's a custom Forge World. Uh, I believe that m- messes with the strength of people, t- strength and toughness. So it gives um, an extra. The, the the scarifying weaponry bit, which is what I think what it is supposed to be rather than scarifying, although it certainly does make things significantly more scary, gives and grants an additional point of strength and an additional point of armor penetration to all radium weapons. And that's all almost that's every weapon in this list. Yep. And the rad saturated. Ah, uh, that is... Sorry to put this all on you. I've got it for you. Yeah, go for it. Mm, excuse me. Hit me. Uh, so basically, if uh, if you're being shot at from more than 12 inches away, you subtract one from the strength characteristic of that attack for any core units, which, of course, everything in this army is Skittles, so it's all core. 
So you're looking at a boost to your firepower and uh, a boost to your defense. A boost to your defense as well, and and you're looking at it across the board as opposed to with Lucius, where you would be looking at it with, you know, that unit that you've tried to make unkillable. Um, so so that that pushes up the uh, Skatari's ability to just move out, take hits, and and shoot back with pure rate of fire. I don't imagine there's a huge amount more relevant here. You've not got a solar flare for re, you know, repositioning. You've got your doctrinas and your canticles, and you. I imagine I haven't seen a game. I don't know if any of you gents have. No, I've not caught this uh, list being played yet. So uh, flood the board. Maybe. I mean, does he have any other option? Nope. <laughs> I, I'm I'm trying to look for a, an interesting thing to talk talk about with the list. Um, lots of people don't take a day to loss us loss these days. And it's the last time you'll see one. <laughs> um, and and this was uh, the lock was pre book of uh, book of fire. Correct. That's correct. So these are not veteran cohorts. No. Uh, and I'm not sure you'd want them to be. I think the this extra list. two points per model would outweigh the benefits that veteran co cohort bring to what this list wants to do. Kerry, do you agree with that? Yeah, I'd agree 100%. You would have to drop two, if not three, entire squad, big squads of Vanguard to fit a veteran cohort. Is that just not worth it? Fair enough. Okay, well, I mean, it's... It seems like a fairly basic game plan, and clearly it's a, it's effective. Uh, push forward, roll a hell of a lot of dice. Uh, how do we think uh, this Ed's uh, Dryaren's list will deal with this? How do we think the sisters with their melee, not a lot of obsec, um, <sighs> are going to do I it? I think you'll deal with it the same way you deal with drawing a two and a five offsuit and a hand of poker. Yeah, with great, great difficulty. <laughs> you fold. <laughs> There's just, there's not enough killing power in almost any list that you're going to see to deal with this many Skittles. Yeah. You've got... Uh, not before they kill you anyway. And and most of the weaponry going in, that minus one toughness, I presume, does make a difference. Um, you've got... Absolutely will, yeah. Strength four, yeah. Okay, well, uh, let's not dwell on it for um, all time. Uh, I'm just going to ask you guys to make a prediction here, um, just so everyone knows. Uh, who are we expecting to advance to the finals? Go faster. Go faster. Yeah. As much as I would love to cheer on our sister's player, I have a feeling that Go Faster is going to take this match. Well, that's depressing. So I'm going to obviously root for Dryarion. Um, Come on, you can do it. I believe faith in the emperor and um, goodwill to all men. Yep, it's definitely going to happen. Uh, confidence. Okay, <clears throat> uh, let's move on to the next semi-final. So uh, we are talking about Seal versus Glinazir there. Obviously, I'm going to have to be rooting for Glinazir as a fellow uh, streamer, caster man. He must be a sterling chap. But uh, let's look at... See, um, seals list first. It's a Death Guard list. You saw it in action on Thursday. You're looking at a battalion detachment, the Inexorable. Uh, you got a Tallyman for that sweet CP. Uh, Demon Prince uh, with the Talons and Plague Skull of Glothila for those uh, mortal wounds that he can fling at people. And a malig malignant Plague Caster, Miasma and Putress of Vitality there. You got two units of Death Guard cultists, ten mans and two Poxwalker, twenty mans for that obsec. The Volkite Contemptor for those mortal wounds and long range shooting. Two Death Shroud Terminators, a Foul Blight Spawn. Um, that's the Fight Last. Two Fetid Bloat Drones and then three Plate Burst Crawlers. Uh, now, having seen that the other day, I can say that normally he likes to take the Plague Buzz Crawlers and use them as is to the last, park them at the back, push forward, the Volkite's another threat, and he'll shoot at you as you come to him with the Bloat Drones pushing forward to threaten you in melee. Uh, played against it myself. Um, 
Is there anything in particular to mention into an admec list that he's facing that he might have taken as a tech? Do you think, Orion or Pants? Um, Tough question. There's some interesting things he can do, but I think he's done. He's going to be very limited on options depending on which map and mission they roll. Hmm. If he's if there's one where he has to spread out, he's going to struggle. Um, holding those points with the fairly limited ops like he has because those cultists need to stay back and hold those backline objectives which means he really only has two squads of 20 pox walkers to go forward and uh we're expecting uh, a lot of shots coming out of the admec player yeah we're even not seeing the list yet it's admec you know there's gonna be a lot of shooting what and unfortunately admec kind of has the answers that death guard poses the question to is do you have enough one damage shooting or you know four or above damage shooting admec has plenty of both yeah absolutely well why don't we quickly uh, go through the list. i'll, oh, I'll sorry, just highlight the combination yeah. of a uh volkite contemptor in this list plus ferric light is um is potent against oh it's admec. very strong yeah absolutely there's as about as good as a death guard list as you're going to really see these days i think and how does that how does that interaction work Pants? So Ferric Blight's Warlord trait is so long as you're in contagion range of this Warlord, uh, any ranged attacks or actually any attacks that are made that you receive uh, have an additional AP on them. Right. So you either run up and get your Warlord within range, or you pop, or you run up uh, another unit and pop. Uh... Flash contagion. Thank Flash you. outbreak. Flash outbreak, uh, which then spreads the contag all the contagions on the battlefield through that unit. Uh, uh, and then you get within range, you shoot your Contemptor, and your Contemptor is now minus one AP. And then effectively also plus one strength, because they will all be minus one toughness. What Correct. about if the opposing unit are all wearing masks and have been double vaccinated? Uh, no luck. Ah, oh, worth a try. Um, Nurgle cares not. <laughs> Papa's not bothered. Um, that's a good. That's a good combo. That's that's one better than the uh, the new Thousand Suns uh, minus one AP Volkite. If you get the minus one strength as well. And notably, those uh, bloat drones were a very popular target for flash outbreak. Of course, with their yeah. hugely move, huge move forward, right? Yeah. The one thing I would maybe have liked to see in this list is a greater blight drone, just for that additional four inches of movement for specifically for flash outbreaking. Just to give you a bit more options from the back. Yeah, fair. Yeah. All right, well, why don't we go through Glenn's list, uh, see what he's got to offer, and then just quickly go over the matchup. So um, we have an Admech. Glenn says T3 Emporium. Nice. I'm buying. Uh, Battalion Detachment. Uh, you're looking at Lucius. Skitari Marshal with the exe uh, Exemplar's Eternity, as you'd expect, a program retreat. There's the Manipulus. And a second Manipulus with the Solar Flare. So Raymond of the Techno Martyr, Solar Flare, as you'd expect. You have four units of Skitari, two Rangers, two Alphas. Uh, one of those Rangers is cheaper. Uh, uh, one only has uh, 18 models. 18 models, yeah. Oh no, sorry, two, one of them has um sorry, one of them has two arc rifles, the other doesn't. That's sorry. where it is. I was gonna say there's there's the same models, but yeah, so those are the long range heavy weapons, snipers. Um, I'm guessing maybe just extra points. Um, and then you've got three, four units of Sakarians. You've got three infiltrators and uh, uh, five mans and a big unit of Sakarian Rust Stalkers. And then in the fast attack, uh, that is a y one big unit of five Iron Strider Balistarius. You've got some Sterilizers and some Cerberus Raiders. Eight of them, in fact. Interesting. Okay, so it looks like he's obviously got his Skitari, as, as you would expect from a, a, a Lucius Admech list, but then he's also gone heavily into the Infiltrators and Rust Stalkers. Uh, infiltrators do their forward deploy? Yes, they forward deploy. And they... Uh, very good at movement blocking in particular. And uh, They've got big bases. So they can forward deploy, and if you get first turn, you box your opponent into their deployment zone, and they can't come mm. out and get you. Exactly. And once you've done that, they can be annoying to remove because of their rule that switches off re-rolls against them within 12 inches. Ah, interesting. But they are T3? They uh, are T3. T3, but two wounds? Two wounds, four up armor, five up involve. So with the contagion from the Death Guard, they'd be going down to T2. 
if they were they would be. engaged in combat. So even even your poxwalkers might be slapping them in the face until they die fairly swiftly. Um, so that's something to be aware of. And then you've got the big unit of uh, rust stalkers. Uh, I don't know if it, you guys have watched any of Glynn's games, but I know you can pick them up and put them down if they're near a board edge. Is he it, does he normally use them for backward screening until that happens, or does he push them forward? Um, from what I've seen, he just pushes them across the board. Um, they're relatively fast, and they are scary in melee. Yeah, they are highly copable, and that relic is fight last. Ah, the extra relic that he's given to the princeps is a fight last. Ah, of course, yeah. makes sense. And they don't they are taking a leaf out of death guard's book they don't take a penalty for ground i believe if i remember correctly that's Correct. right yep. the next will be a bones. so uh they'll be they'll be flinging themselves at your face and so and and you've also got the big unit of cerberus raiders as well so it seems like there's a lot of push forward take over the board box you in skittles follow get on the points and shoot you to death while you're dealing with all of the other stuff yeah, whilst you're also being subjected by to ten blast cannon shots around. <laughs> and do you think he's gone for the one big unit because it's easier to put single buffs on if required? Um, as opposed yeah, absolutely. To, yeah, okay. Although that can cause a problem uh, as opposed to having a couple of smaller units because you can't really split your fire knowing what you've shot or not. Um, and I imagine the Taraxia are in there uh, for just actions. Yeah, I would expect those. To, I mean, I would expect those to pretty much purely be action monkeys. And action they... monkeys engage any of the just to score you and secure you some points because they're they are the lowest threat in this list, so they're going to be ignored. Yeah. Also, a reminder that season eight is still pre fac admec, so Taraxi can do stupid things. I was just about to mention that you can put them down and then pick them up. Uh, no, we actually ruled. Um... Day, oh, was it? I think that FAQ dropped the day of um, the season start, and we put that in. Yeah, so you can't do really stupid things with the Taraxi. Um, yeah, you're right. I was yeah. thinking more recent. Ah, right. Back and mixing the two up. Yeah, we, we specifically disallowed that because that was a rather game breaking. Yeah. What you can do is put a stupid number of buffs on those Ballastari and make them extremely difficult to remove. Yes, uh, which you cannot do anymore. Yep, and it's also a final outing of brokenness for the Rangers and the Vanguards with the enriched rounds and I can't remember the the, the, the Ranger strat, but Galvanic Volley Fire. Galvanic Volley Fire, yes, they still work in their pre nerfed form. Yeah. It's gonna be interesting to see how things change. I don't imagine it'll be a huge amount. Um, although that exemplar's eternity and the Iron Striders might be a bit less prevalent. Um, Alright, so We've got a general game plan for this. How do we see this playing out now that we've seen this list? It kind of depends on who gets first turn a bit more than the other matchup. If Death Guard goes first and can get some good mortar hits into the Ballastari or the Rust Stalkers, that could put a big dent in, um, in Glynister's game, game plan for sure. Hmm. Before he can get his uh, buffs up on the... On on them yeah exactly and uh and if glenn gets first turn he's obviously well he, he'll presumably get in his face and uh get those skittles uh the iron striders buffed up las chickens getting in some shots and then hope that the he can save them long enough that they can start blowing apart plague burst crawlers uh here's a question uh, seals taken to the last every every game so far is this the the matchup where you don't take it for those play burst crawlers? Um, I think you still take it because if you lose them all, you've probably lost the game regardless. Kira, do you do you, do you think that's the case? I agree. Um, if nothing else, because that's how the list has been built. Like when you enter into list building, you always have to consider what secondaries you want to build the list around. Uh, and if it means that those entropy cannons don't see any any shots at all, then but he scores 15 points onto the last at the end of the game, then he's in an excellent spot. Yeah. He always has the option of occasionally poking his head out when he feels safe and say he's whittled that chicken unit down to two or three. Um, that's the only real big threat to the plague bursts. Yeah, it's pretty much the only thing that isn't wounding them on sixes. Hmm. 
And and the other thing that I've seen him do every game is use start those death shroud up um, in deep strike and bring them down normally for uh, rod retrieve Octarius data and then because they can reliably rod they're very hard to kill and suddenly you've got death shroud terminators on your backfield. Do you think that that's something he'll be looking to do this game if possible? It seems risky putting some units up in deep strike when you've got this flood coming at you and the iron striders can very easily screen pretty much an entire backfield themselves. Yes, this this list has a lot of screening capability. I would put my bet on those death shrouds starting on the table. Yeah, I would as well. I don't see a world where he's going to even attempt to get rod off. I think he's going to go for probably to the last um, maybe grind them down or um, not bring them down what's the other one um, no prisoners there's no prisoners one where you count the tally of yeah yeah, yes. yeah it's like I can remember what they changed the name to yeah um, I think those could both possibly be uh, pickups for this matchup because they're, just, they're they're based on killing, and you've got that's what you're gonna have to do because they're flying. You're gonna it. have to you're gonna have to kill a hell of a lot of units. Is there a, a death guard particular stratagem that's useful? I know there's the one where you um, plague. Um, there's, yeah, there's the one where you basically spread bad. plague onto the objectives. Generally, it's considered to be a pretty poor choice because you can't do it with pox walkers and you can't do it with cultists. So the only two things he could really do it with are his um death shroud yeah you can do it with box walkers you can do it with, oh yeah sorry you can but you yeah yeah it's the other one they can't do uh, and, and i've not even heard of any of the other ones i've never played against it's, the other it's ones. worthwhile considering on a three object oh sorry six objective map where you have three objectives in your deployment mm. just yes Get some early but that's about off. the only time you ever would even consider taking that um, secondary. It's also very uh, turn one dependent, I imagine. Yeah. You you you, d you don't want to have a lot of infiltrators in your face. They kill your pox walkers, and suddenly you don't have any obsec, and you've not mutated any objectives. Not mutated. Sorry, thousand sun spoiler there. Um, that's uh, yeah. Okay. Well, what do we think? How do we reckon it's going to go? It sounds like we're at mech favoured again, which is disgusting. And obviously I've got to support Seal because he knocked me out. Um, um, I would say that it really comes down to who gets first turn. I think that's going to be one of the biggest factors on this matchup. Because if Death Guard gets it and is able to you know, pluck away those uh, last chickens, that frees up those um, uh, those play bridge crawlers to be able to do a lot more work around the map. Um, rather than just having to cower and put all of their mortars into those. Mm. I'd agree. And because it's also, especially if uh, Glenn deploys those infiltrators aggressively, they could be used as leapfrog charges for, uh, for the Death Guard players, other units. So push forward the Pox Walkers, get that charge pile in, consolidate around them, get onto objectives, make it difficult. So they have to yep, deal absolutely. with the things you don't want to deal with. Ah, first yeah. turn. Yeah, unfortunately that first turn roll could be uh, could be game deciding on this matchup. Well, there's an interesting debate whether the change from the beginning of ninth for first turn choice versus first turn if you if you win the roll off was a, a good change or not, but I don't think we have time for that today. That's a, that's a whole other hour. Um, That's a whole podcast episode in itself. It really is. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, so I, I like designing lists for going second. I enjoy that. But Seal is confident going second into most matchups. He's told me. He said before. You know, he's he's designed the list so he can do that. But uh, this might just be one where that that's not really really viable. Are we or prediction? Going to ask for it. Are in first? I mean, I would say it's really hard to call. I really. I, 50-50, pretty much, depending on who Ooh. goes first. 50-50. Maybe, slight, maybe slightly ad make favored, but... Sitting on the fence, toe tentatively touching the grass on the side of, of ad mech. Okay, all right. Uh, Curie? I'm definitely actually leaning towards Seal on this. Um, I've played this matchup with lists very similar. Um, it comes down to player skill and player familiarity with the book. Mm. Uh, Seal 
strikes me as having a better grasp on their book than Glenn does on theirs. And I don't mean that Glenn is not a good player. I, it's just that he was playing Marines in the previous season. Yeah. yeah Glenisir is traditionally a Salamanders player. Um, that could make a big difference. Book, not, not to mention also the book is still quite new. Yeah, and there's a lot of different buffs and things you want to throw around. Um, and a lot of models to move, which can take a lot of time. And let's not forget we're on a clock. Yeah, Agreed. absolutely. And that is something that Glen has been in Glenisir before, is uh, clock times. Uh, so pants. Oh, so you're actually coming down on seal side. Interesting. No, 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 not where I was thinking. What, um, what, what side do you come down on, pants? Ooh, this is a match I would not put any money on. No. No. Do your fiver right now. But, but, dude, what did I just say? Oh, sorry, my bad. Yeah, I, um, <laughs> you know addiction. <laughs> I'm I'm a gambling man, and I would not have a clue which way to gamble on this one. I think it's uh, it's going to be a fantastic match. I really hope I have an opportunity to watch it. Okay, all right. So no no actual prediction there for for no stakes at all. And I and I hate being that weak and <laughs> not putting any money where my mouth is. But I just I, yeah, I, it's a hard one to predict. Two lists. They're, they're two fantastic lists. Um, driven by two fantastic players. Fan, uh, fair fair play. Well, I'm gonna obviously come down on the side of Seal. Uh, he, he, as I say, I've, I've played him. He knocked me out. He's fantastic. I have to support him. If he wins, I look a lot better. So uh, I will be supporting Seal. And I think we're going to have a Death Guard Sisters final. No ad mech. What a beautiful thing, ladies and gentlemen. It's very exciting. Um, okay, cool. Well, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what happens. We will know later tonight uh, at least one of those players. So, um, yeah. And hopefully we'll have a great final, which I'm sure we will. All right, uh, moving on. Let's talk about season nine. Uh, that's what a lot of us are waiting for and looking forward to. Big changes. Um, Orion, if you could lead on that, seeing as you're the main alpha man. Yeah, absolutely. So um, one of the big changes is we're actually changing the format up a little bit. We're not breaking from you know the pod structure into playoffs, though we have done a little our little experiment this uh, season with pushing the playoffs to be considerably faster, and that appears to have gone quite well. So we will be sticking with that. Um, but we will be swapping the format out from being a seeded pod system to being a basically essentially a random pod system. So we're going to go up to 160 players. Um, and every pod will be randomized. And on top of that, only one player from each pod will be going through into uh, playoffs rather than having the top two uh, sorry, the top four play uh, pods having two players go through. Yeah. Um, we have some fairly big rules changes coming up as well. Um, some of which are still in discussion in the, the other one, and some of it is based on the, our terrain. Um, yeah, do you want to talk about that? Um, we've got some uh, exciting new terrain changes and map changes. Yes, because we have a full new map pack for this season. Uh, we've been using the same one for the last two seasons, and it's, whilst it's served us well, we have learned its flaws, and not to mention, you know, you need to change it once in a while. Absolutely. Um, so if we go and have a look at that, we can kind of go through some of the, the map changes in particular. Across, here we go. We have a fantastically scaled image here. Thank you, Streamlabs. Um, and this is one of the new maps. As you can see. Yeah, this is one of the new maps, which is um, a little bit squinty-eyed. <laughs> but what we can see is, um, if you look at the terrain, the ruins with windows now have ledges on the outside of them. Um, and one of the big uh, reasons we've implemented this is that ruins that you are not physically standing on with your base will no longer grant you the benefits of the uh, of that terrain. You will no longer be counted as being within the, with on, on top of or within that terrain. So, for example, um, the Terminator here, looking at the Space Marine veteran, cannot see him as is you know normal for you know not being able to see through obscuring terrain. Yep. Is neither of them are touching it and it's in between them. This one, he is not quite touching the wall, but he is standing on that edge 
before he would have to be right up against that wall to be able to see through or be you know in the doorway there now all he has to do is be touching the very edge of that lip to be able to see through so right now he can see this um vanguard veteran and the third point is that this one this a uh, vanguard veteran over here in previous seasons he would be gaining all the benefits of this um terrain's uh, features so he'd be gaining light cover he would be gaining defensible um whereas at the moment now because there's no lip underneath him for him to stand on he cannot gain the benefits of that cover yeah and um Curie, uh, if this is due to the uh, rule debate on what on or within meant, I believe, from the start, when gaining the benefits of cover and ruins? That is exactly what it is. Uh, this is something that every community has interpreted differently. We have played one way in the past. We are going to be changing up in how it's played now going forward, but it also makes it much more clear. Um, you have to be on terrain to be within it not touching it yeah just to improve precision this has never been something that's actually been a matter of interpretation of the rules the rules themselves are very clear sadly the rules simply fail to answer this point because the rules simply say the players involved need to agree what the boundaries of the terrain feature are yes and if you are within the boundaries you are within the terrain we have always simply defined the, our own boundaries of our ruins to extend to slightly beyond the physical models, and we are no longer doing that. And this now gives you the visual cue, makes it a lot easier all round. Yeah, absolutely. And <clears throat> I'm also going to quickly load up a different map. Sure. Um, because we have also um, one other slight change. Uh, I should also note all these uh, maps were made by Marius Evander, uh, one of the community for Alpha season, well, Alpha in general. He's been around for a long time. Great guy. I played him last season. Oh, Terrence. yep. I, I, I've managed to completely screw this up. <laughs> but because <laughs> now we have both terrains on here. Oh, I my God. Apologies. Now, this is a great level of terrain. We should do this. And then, uh, and no, this is this is truly cursed. And then the squig buggies can stand wherever they want and shoot whatever they want. Yeah, this is this is truly. Oh, thank you, Kerry. <laughs> uh, let, let me load that back up again. Um, oh, and uh, yeah, worth noting here: when every time you load the map, there's a couple of missions that can be played on it, and those two s cards load with it. Uh, just in case you want to see what you're playing on. Look at this. This is gorgeous. Um, but to note that these ruins on these maps, and they're, you might well, want to pay attention when you're loading up a mission and you're loading and you roll for your map and you load it up, um, check the ruins. All of the large ruins still have obscuring on both map types. On the one set of the map types, um, the small ruins do not have obscuring. They don't have windows, so they're still line of sight blocking. But, for example... Oh, I see. Scalable, breachable, light cover, defensible, not obscuring. A big, tall model like a, for example, a Knight Megara can see right over that. That is terrifying. I think I'm just going to hide with this Rubik Marine right here. Let's get away from him. Uh, okay, so that's that's definitely something to be aware of and to mouse over, um, because in the past I guess we would have expected these to all be obscuring and need to be safe, but that's that's absolutely fair. And I don't see any lips in this map. There are no lips because there are no windows. The only ones we've added lips to this season are the ones with windows. Which is a very deliberate decision because it gives you that trade-off where if you want light cover, you have to accept increased visibility from the enemy yeah which absolutely makes sense these 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 adverts are amazing i have a name not a number <laughs> shortened to 26 this is this is amazing incredible design oh, I'm yeah pumped. no uh, marius has done well with the uh the maps this season look at these okay well they're just the models okay all right i'm just enjoying myself too much here 
Um, yeah, he's done an incredible job. This is this is very exciting. Hey, the, the the previous load of maps were great and looked fantastic, but I'm 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 not even going to play these until the next season, just so that every time I load one up, it's going to be a nice surprise. That's what I'm. That's my plan at least. Uh, is that a fantastic tactical decision? Maybe not. Also, Probably not. Like getting to know the maps you're going to be playing on is usually quite a good decision. It'll be fine. Also, hi Marius. Well done, buddy. These are, this is some of your finest work. Second only to that token you made me that I can use as a banner, which is just a, a coin with the, the eagle on it. Um, but is clearly the best thing you've ever done. Um, that's amazing. Thanks so much for the work. Okay, uh, so any further changes we should be talking about here? We've got to look out for the, the lips on the ruins, obstacles, or, well, ruins but not being obscuring, um, and the windows. Anything else we need to be aware of with this new map set? Um, no, that largely covers it, I believe. Something I'll highlight is um, a an increase in prevalence of terrain that uses the same rules as the vents we used to have. Oh, yes, let me load one of those maps up. Uh, let me just Dense and light. Terrain. Where the, the, the notable thing about them is that they um, are often considered to be... Wow. So, yeah, the um, distorted realities here on this map have the same rule as the oil spills and the vents that we're using. Um, basically, they're area terrains um, that have dense cover and difficult ground. Some of them have light cover or heavy cover. These ones don't have either of those in this particular map. Okay. But they do vary. So again, always make sure you're checking your terrain types when you start to play. Yeah, which is just good, good advice in general. Um, so you, you may re recall that... Um, Dense cover has to be a certain height to work. Mm. Difficult ground has to be below a certain height in order not to affect um, Titanic units. Mm. Uh, but we um, have a bunch of terrain that's considered to be tall enough to count for dense while simultaneously being not tall enough to impede Titanic units as difficult. Right. Well, that's what happens when you distort reality, really. No, the ruins on this map are indeed obscuring. Yeah, the ruins are... Hey, hey, Uzi. Uh, the ruins are obscuring here, um, these ones, uh, but and they've got the lip, so if you're standing you gain on the outside, you gain the benefit of cover, or if you... Um, so that's fine, you don't have those, and then these are all obscuring as well. Love the colours. Uh, also, thanks for the follow, Tectonic. Welcome. Let's see yeah, there's see. very... There's, there are shooting lines from spawn to spawn but they are very narrow yeah it's uh it's a good low it's a good amount of cover I, I like to think that this is a russian doll type effect uh, just reality is all over the place here this big ruin here just gave birth to this one and then there's a smaller one off here that we can't see just a little baby barricade or something which if you just made it a bigger if this was an armageddon map that's what happened and it would just go all the way um no and and again the visuals on this are just amazing I'm a little bit scared by this bit. As a, as just that's definitely a mouth. That's all I'm saying. Don't position your units there; they'll get eaten. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're playing Slaneshi Demons, you're probably going to have an advantage on this map. Yeah, clearly, you're going to roll like an absolute legend. Um, amazing. All right. Well, uh, thanks again, Marius. Um, you've done an absolutely sterling job. These are all absolutely fantastic. Um, can't wait to 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 play on. Them. Uh, speaking of, when will I be able to play on them, Orion? Well, you can play on them right now for your practice games. There is a link to them in the Alpha Announcements channel. Um, and you'll be officially playing on them, assuming you sign up for the tournament, as of the 5th of September. Or as of the 6th of September, I suppose, yeah, because the sign-ups end at the end of the 5th of November of September. So how can, how can we sign up? You've uh, posted an announcement. 
Uh, there's an announcement in the alpha uh, chat. Well, I have, I have an alpha announcements channel. And um, yeah, we hope to see you there soon, to be honest. Um, yeah, uh, absolutely. Get involved. 160 slots, plenty of room for everyone. A lot. I mean, we already have, since opening the, uh, opening the sign-ups, what, an hour ago? We already have uh, 29 people signed up. And that's not even including me. I need to get on it. Oh my god, I'm, I'm not going to be an early bird. I'm going to be just considered someone normal joining. Oh, ugh. Just want to throw in at this stage an encouragement to actually pay attention to alpha announcements if you are interested in being involved in alpha. I had a number of people last season who sadly missed out because they didn't notice us saying whoops, sorry, we lost the registrations, and even if you registered before, you need to register again. So while we obviously hope to avoid any shenanigans like that this time, alpha announcements can be important things. Alpha announcements and stream announcements, very important to turn off or to turn on at here if you've got it turned off. Isn't that right, guys? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, without a doubt. Yeah, 100%. Turn it, turn it, um, turn it to on. To answer the question in the chat, Hitor Henge Velasco, um, yeah, we have plenty of casual players in um, Alpha. They tend to have quite positive experiences. Um, the reality of bringing in a you know casual list as a casual player, there's a decent chance there's going to be a you know relatively skilled or competent player in your pod who very might run away with it. But that doesn't mean that you won't learn or you won't have good matches. Yeah, and that's the most important thing. It, it is a fun experience regardless. Um, you, 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 I've not had a bad match in Alpha. I've enjoyed every one. I've I played against Orion in my first ever Alpha pod. Um, and it's how, you, it's how you get involved in the community. Um, and it doesn't matter if you go through or not. Um, uh, should note that Tuss will crush me in that game. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, that's 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 the best way to have a positive experience. But uh, no, even in even in losing, Seal uh, Seal beat me. I didn't have much much chance. He crushed me this season, but I still had a fantastic time playing it and wouldn't have changed it. So uh, definitely worth getting involved, um, just just for the fun. And you know what? Even better if you if you win something with your own list, your own style. Um, that's 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 a cool way to be. That's uh, yeah. I, I, I would definitely encourage you to join. Um, yeah, and there'll be space. Tuzel here wrecked me last season, and I had so much fun in that match, I joined his team. <laughs> it's true. Kiri, we should play one day. We should. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, no. Okay, I'm suddenly a lot less confident. <laughs> yeah, Kiri's quite a good player. You may have bitten off more you can chew than <laughs> I've been building myself up, and now I'm going to get destroyed. I do have a new at Mars veteran cohort list that needs a trial. Oh, what fun! Oh, what day would you do? I'm busy. I'm so sorry. I'm washing my hair <laughs> and I've got a headache uh, at the same time. <laughs> um, yeah. Actually, actually, that would be a lot of fun. Uh, one, one of the things we will be doing next uh, week is looking at what we expect for the new season. Uh, we will be including the three new books and the Book of Fire? Yep. Yep, all those will be um, live, including the Orcs book. There was some debate just because it's a bit complicated with Orcs because they're not technically out, but they are out. But, uh, um, better to play. So but no, no FAQs are likely forthcoming for some of the slightly more um, spicy elements of the Orc book. But uh, we're going to run them anyway, see what the damage is, and hope that there's uh, FAQs for them by the time Season 10 is coming around. Very important to have FAQs. I mean, look at the Book of Fire FAQ. That's... Oof. Oh, yeah, that, that did a lot of damage right there. <laughs> That's a good one. I'll... Rest in peace, Bellacor and friends. <laughs> oh, yeah, wow. <laughs> I mean, doesn't... Speaking of FAQs, cool. just a reminder that since we don't have official ones yet, there are probably quite a lot of cues about the new books. Um, and I've put the call out in Alpha Questions and Answers for everything you're unclear about about the new books to be asked so that we can figure out which of the cues are FA and A them. Absolutely. Uh, and, and do read the rules primers that come out, um, the rules team, which uh, all three of my 
uh, co-hosts here are, uh, are are part of do a fantastic job doing a load of work for us, um, making sure that we're playing the best way possible. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, w worth reading uh, just to make sure you know what's going on. I will say, by the way, Creeper, if Orcs are legal, there's no reason to play it, not to play Nine Squig Buggies. There is, you could be a decent human being. Well, there also is for the stratagems and etc., which only apply to one squig or units of one squig buggy. Yeah, the custom jobs. Yeah, you want to play seven squig buggies so that you can put nitro squigs on one of them. Okay, giving away all the tips here, guys. Come on, people, gotta let, gotta let people work this stuff out or not play orcs. You really want to play zero squig buggies so that you can be my friend. <laughs> can confirm, being Pants' friend is, you know, worth it. I'd say. Um, it's very exciting. It's a, it's a roller coaster ride every day. Um, so next, yeah. Uh, in terms of reading the uh, the primer in the FAQ, absolutely read the primer. Um, the FAQ. You might want to wait a bit because we have a handful of rulings that we're about to add for it. Add to it. In yeah. What was that? Thirty <laughs> six. Yeah, something like that. Are you going to give Thank Sangor and Lighter the break keyword? No. No. We will not be doing. <laughs> Rulings Did, like that. No, we don't edit data sheets for you. Damn it! Worth a try. Okay, all right, that's fine. Um, just, just, just hoping you would give me obsec or out of out of nowhere um, on my really speedy flying disc unit. That would be lovely. No, there's probably a good reason why they don't have it. Yeah, probably, probably, but worth a try. Um, cool. Well, uh, definitely a lot to look forward to there. As I say, next week we'll be looking at those uh, codexes and chatting about them in a, in a bit of detail. We'll be looking at the um, what happened this week in terms of the semi-finals and the finals. Um, we'll have crowned a new champion hopefully by then, I believe. Uh, that's certainly the plan. Yeah, I, ideally we'll have our both our finals and our third, fourth place uh, matchup done by next Sunday. They don't, don't uh, no, they have to be finished by the end of Sunday, but hopefully they will not they'll be finished before the podcast yeah so we can talk about that congratulate them we'll try and get whoever it is to come on um tell us uh how they won and how they beat admec in the semi-finals to get there um that's that's my hope uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about what we're expecting from season nine with the new codexes come a little bit armed with uh some knowledge and yeah i think stress. we'll try and get um Try and get a list built for each of those uh, armies and just kind of discuss our thoughts and like what kind of things we can expect to see. Yeah, I think it'd be fantastic to have uh, even a couple of takes ourselves and we can kind of compare and contrast. I already have a Thousand Suns list that I'm playing. Uh, so do I. Mm, I'm loving it. I have played one match against Sisters, uh, which I won. I have played four, one against Sisters, which was a lesson in brutality I'd rather forget. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, well, I, I uh, fortunately I could rely on my superior skill and my opponent's inability to roll fives to deny my psychic powers. Uh, yeah, which I has a face. <laughs> yes, um, but certainly going to be interesting. And my, my, uh, you know, the, the the fantastic addition of this ever-changing game is new codexes come in. People try them, people play them. They may be strong, but then they're going to be weak against other things. Sisters could be a fantastic pick next season. Uh, very excited for that. Um, we should uh, give a plug to our sponsors. Uh, Orion, if uh, yeah, you're absolutely. able to lead with that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'd love to thank our uh, wonderful sponsor, Wailing Jutani uh, Inc. again. Uh, they are the terrain maker who helps us design our uh, map layouts and also um, is the terrain designer for multiple tournaments around the world, including the World Team Championship Series. And they produce some fantastic terrain that you can get at their website, whaleandutaniinc.com, or you can Google whaleandutani terrain. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks, guys. Uh, incredibly helpful letting us build the channel of this community that everyone gets involved in and, uh, and, and push forward, making, uh, making it bigger and better and stronger. Um, I, think, I think we've covered uh, most of what we wanted to talk about, right? Um, yeah, if there's any questions from the chat before we yeah. uh, head into our outro, that'd be great. Absolutely. Any 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 particularly niggly rules questions for Panzer Curie? Any um, questions about 
fluff for myself. I can tell you the greatest warrior in the Imperium is Trajan Valoris. He, he may not have the stats, but that's just coming. I can't wait. He's going to get a sweet profile and the best spear ever. All right, Diesel. Mm? Why is belly button fluff always blue? Ah, well, actually, I can answer that. Um, it's an illusion. That's all I got. That's... <laughs> I don't. Mess it up. Also, yes, Creepy does have a good point. Trajan has an axe, not a spear. Look, okay, axes, spears, it's all long, long phallic weapons that we but hold with two hands. <laughs> it's true, he has the Watcher's axe. I don't know what I'm saying. Creeper, I'm so sorry, and I've let everyone down. Maybe he'll get a spear. Axes are phallic? I'm concerned about your anatomy now. Well, <laughs> okay, um, <clears throat> this has gone terribly. Uh, it's not me. It's... Well, Pants, there's a question for you in the chat. There are dozens of I us. I don't like... <laughs> no. See, I love squigs. I hate squig buggies. That's the thing. Squig riders? Do we see the beast snagger squig guy? Yeah, I mean, those are fantastic looking models. Awesome squigasaur. That's going to give us some headaches later. Uh, <laughs> no. uh rules-wise. Oh. What's, uh, what can he do that's uh, that's worrying? Hurt you. Yeah, quite a bit, Badly. to be <laughs> Excellent, so that's something to look forward to. Uh, what was and, and not die. And not die at all. I actually uh, hit him with a Galatus um, the other week, and he just about didn't die. Uh, and then my Galatus blew up and took a, took a mortal wound off him, and he died. It was very helpful. Uh, but don't rely on that to kill him. It probably won't work. Uh, what was the deal old Emps made with Chaos to make the Primarchs? Well, you see, it was, I think, it was more of a gamble. So everyone was around the, you know, around the table playing cards and he was winning and getting little bits of chaotic stuff involved in, in making it. And then it was clear that he was winning. So the Chaos Gods got angry, flipped the table, messed everything up, and then they fell out. And it's all kind of gone from there, you know. It was, it was, it was all just a drunken night with the lads, and then it's gone horribly wrong. That's my theory. You know, gambling. It can go wrong. It can lead to a ten thousand year war. Do yeah, it. I mean, also, I mean, sending your children into random parts of space and just hoping for the best, you know, might have some flaws to it as a plan. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, parenting, you know, there's different different tactics and techniques. Maybe it's for their own good. I, 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 I clearly it worked for some of them. Yeah, clearly I missed the uh, what was it, 29th century book on yeeting your kids into space as a parenting guide. <laughs> yeah, well, you can't pay too much attention to them because then they become, you know, reliant on you and and you know spoiled. So therefore, yeet them across half of space. That's about as lucid as anything you've read in the official law, to be honest. Well, you know, I, I, I don't want to say I was there. Um, but, you know, I've, I've played poker before. That's all I'll say. Um, all right. If there's anything else anyone wants to add, that's uh, please, please go ahead. If not, I guess we can kind of start wrapping things up. Yeah, I just want to part on the note by saying that if anyone's been listening and going, yeah, this all sounds very cool, but tournament play isn't for me please don't assume that without giving it at least one go alpha was my first introduction to competitive play a mere three seasons ago um, and in that short space of time here i am now podcasting and rules lawyering because it's been a fantastic journey and your journey may be different but hopefully it will be equally as fun so come yeah, and in fact you even um, went to your first real life gt what a few weeks ago that's right yeah, that, that is fantastic. I, I, I know I got introduced to uh, the Alpha League by a friend I met playing Tabletop Simulator, um, a pod, um, and, and some pickup games. And uh, yeah, and then through here I've made, made friends with Pants and Orion and most recently Curie. Uh, very recently Curie. Uh, and it's an excellent community to be part of. So, but, so do get involved even if you're not, not, not feeling the tournament style. That's not what it's all about. And uh, who knows, maybe it'll spur you on. Ah, oh, I love you too, Chris. 
Good man. Absolutely destroyed me first time we played and then I tabled him second time. So it was even. Uh, back when Imperial Fist existed as an army. Yeah, I think I've lost to Chris three times and beaten him once. Yeah, well, you should play him these days. <laughs> yeah, this is true. I should make him bring Imperial, uh, yeah, Imperial Fist to uh, versus a modern army. Yeah. <laughs> Might have a better chance then. Every week he comes up with a new artillery toting list. Guess who's interested in squig buggies? Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so let's uh, should we wrap it up there? That's it's been fantastic talking yeah, to you guys. Yeah, I think that's been. Yeah, it's been good to get the Alpha Podcast back uh, back up and running. It's been too long without it. Yeah, uh, I this is all fairly new, but we'll we'll try and get this uh, going regularly. Different content, get some interesting people on. Maybe uh, when we've got some lists going in, we'll do some list reviews. Um, ask for some submissions. You guys can show us what you've got, and we can try and figure out how you'll play it and uh, tell you why what you've done is terrible or fantastic hopefully the latter um, I know I will be trying not to look at my own list because that's narcissistic or depressing depending on whether everyone else thinks it's good or bad so you know um, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep we'll keep the content going uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it and join us uh, next week similar time yeah and uh, we should just mention that in what is it? An hour and a half. Um, yes. We should be having a sh show match that Glynisir, who is one of our semi-finalists, will be hosting. Yes, uh, I believe there's um, it's a show match between Chaos Soup and another another list that I can't recall off the top of my head. Uh, or free Bellacore. It's Orcs uh, Freebooters versus uh, uh, Bellacore and Cohort. Uh, cool. between two alpha players two very good alpha players might I add as well yeah, so it should... like it'll be a brilliant match yeah it's going to be S. Payne versus Corkin sounds fantastic I've never seen Bellacor in action I'd love to do that um, yeah so get involved watch that if you if you want to uh, I'm sure it'll be cracking and uh, we'll hopefully see you next week thanks for thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed yourself and uh, good night everyone Good night, everybody. Bye, everyone.